Quick question, which of the following is the roundest and smoothest? Is it this billiard ball? Is it this blue planet? Or is it this silicon sphere? Go ahead and think of an answer while I stand here awkwardly waiting for you to think of something. Maybe me talking while you are thinking of such a something is actually confusing you. You can just pause the video. Are you done? 100% sure? The answer is the silicon sphere. That's it. You can go home now unless you're already home. If you want a more detailed answer, stick around. The World Pool Billiard Association says that a billiard ball must measure around 5.715 centimeters in diameter with an allowable error of around 0.127 millimeters. This gives us a margin of error of around 0.2222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222
but I'm not joking. It actually is slightly flatter than you imagine. The rotation of the Earth is actually making it so that if you measure the diameter of the Earth between two opposing points at the equator and two opposing points between the North and the South Pole, you're going to find that Earth's diameter at the equator is actually larger. It's not an exact diameter. This makes Earth an oblate spheroid, not a sphere. If we take this effect and exaggerate it just a bit, you can clearly see that there is a problem here. Now before we move on, it is important for us to understand why the universe seems to like spherical objects so much. There's a reason for that, of course, and that is because a sphere is the most efficient three-dimensional shape out of all the possible three-dimensional shapes. It requires the least surface area to enclose a particular volume. Go ahead and try it yourself. Here is, let's say, around a thousand cubic meters. I want you to find a three-dimensional shape that can enclose this volume and has less surface area than that of a sphere. You will soon go mad because you'll realize that this is an impossible thing to do, so good luck. Now, the universe liking spheres is only an ideal situation. In reality, it's very difficult to find a perfect sphere because usually there is some resistance preventing the sphere from becoming a perfect sphere. The example I gave earlier is Earth's rotation, which flattens it just a bit. This effect is not only unique to Earth. The bulging effect affects any spinning object. The rotation of an object makes the parts that are close to the equator of such an object to feel an outwards push, and this effect becomes weaker and weaker as you approach the poles of the rotating object. This is referred to as the equatorial bulge. The most extreme example we can find in our solar system comes in the form of the dwarf planet Hobie. It spins six times faster than Earth, and because it is less dense and less massive than Earth, it has elongated itself beyond recognition. It now looks like one of those football balls you've played for like five years with and then left it in the basement for five more years. It's not a sphere anymore. Now, as much as I criticize Earth for not exactly being a sphere, there are way worse offenders in our solar system. You know them as the gas giants. You might have not noticed this previously, but if you were to Google search some images of such gas giants, you're actually going to notice the equatorial bulge just from the image. There is no need to exaggerate it. But if I were to exaggerate the equatorial bulge of the gas giants by a mere five times, they end up like someone stepped on them, especially Saturn, which is really, really bad at not exactly being a perfect sphere. But do you know what object has the least equatorial bulge in our solar system? Hint, it's not a planet. Hint, it has 99.8% to 99.9% .9 the mass of our solar system. Hint, it's the sun. If you were to measure the diameter of the sun between two opposing points at the equator and two opposing points at the poles, you're going to find out that the difference is only 12 kilometers. It's not that much. Remember, the diameter of the sun is 109 times larger than Earth. And without making anything proportional, the equatorial bulge of the sun is less than that of the Earth. Now let's see, can the sun beat the roundest and smoothest object ever made by humans? No. No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, even if the sun's surface was perfectly smooth, the fact is, its oblateness kind of ruins it. If we blow up the size of one of those silicon spheres to the size of the sun, we'll find out that the highest and lowest points on such a sphere are between 327 meters to 546 meters. This is still less than the oblateness of the sun. If the sun can't beat these silicon spheres, is there any other star that could? The roundest typical star ever discovered is Kepler 1114523. Kepler 111. Hello? I didn't dial a phone number. That's the name of a star. Yeah, yeah. By the way, how are you talking to me? My hand is not a phone. Really? Okay then. Thank you for your call. Goodbye. Kepler 1114523 is a star that has around 1.5 times the mass of our own sun and around 2.25 times the diameter of our own sun. However, it spins three times slower. This gives it an equatorial bulge of six kilometers, which unfortunately is still not enough to beat the silicon spheres that have been made here on Earth. Cheese Mag Nabbit. Is there anything that can beat those silicon spheres? 
What about those objects that I've probably mentioned in probably half of all the videos that I've ever made neutron stars? They might actually be able to contend with the smoothest and roundest object ever made by humans. Neutron stars are the densest type of stars ever discovered. They are very, very close from collapsing into a black hole. Don't add sugar if the mass of the sugar is enough to cause the neutron star to collapse into a black hole. The reason being, let me ask you this first. What surface is more friendly to higher and higher mountains? Is it the surface of the moon or the surface of the earth? That of course would be obviously, clearly, anyone would know this, the surface of the uh, moon. Why? Because the surface gravity of the moon is less than that of the earth. Now, of course, mountain formation is not only affected by the surface gravity of an object. There are other factors that would form mountains, but you get the idea. A lower surface gravity allows you to get higher mountains. Now, let's take a look at the surface gravity of a neutron star, which is absolutely unbelievable. Do you know how high a mountain could get on the surface of a neutron star? It's between 0.04 and 0.4 millimeters. Yes, it's not that high. Now, if we blow up the size of one of those silicon spheres, the size of a neutron star, we finally find that a neutron star beats those silicon spheres. Hooray! Not yet. The bad news is that neutron stars are also some of the fastest spinning objects in the universe. Yep, the fastest neutron star ever discovered spins 716 times per second. A ridiculous number of spins per second. This would give it, you guessed it, an equatorial bulge. It would not look like a sphere. But there is some good news. Not all neutron stars are equal. There's a neutron star that was discovered called 1E1613485055. This star, hello? No, my hand is not a phone. Yes, yes. All right, goodbye. Why am I making the joke twice? I'm not very creative. Sorry. Anyway, 1E1613485055 is a neutron star that was discovered to be spinning very slowly. If you were to compare its spin to the fastest spinning neutron star ever discovered, you will find out that it is spinning 17 million times slower. It's spinning only once every 6.67 hours. This would make the amount of bulging it would have due to its rotation to be almost negligible. If you add this bulging effect to the highest point you could have on the surface of a neutron star, you will find out that the difference between the lowest and the highest point you could have on the surface of such a neutron star to be very roughly about a millimeter. Finally, we have found something that beats the roundest and smoothest object ever made by man. Right? Right? No. Fortunately, no. The rotation of an object is not the only thing that would prevent it from becoming a sphere. It can face resistance in other ways. Neutron stars especially face the problem of having some of the strongest magnetic fields in the universe. The slowest neutron star ever discovered, 1E1613485055, while doesn't exactly spin very fast, it is thought that some of the reasons for why it is spinning so slowly is because it possesses a very strong magnetic field, much stronger than average neutron stars. So if you had a neutron star that is spinning very fast, then it is going to bulge mostly due to its rotation. But if you had a neutron star that is not exactly spinning very fast, like 1E1613485055, then its magnetic field is going to take over and deform it anyway. So it seems that humans win this round. Congratulations to everyone. It seems we have created the roundest and smoothest object in the universe. Do we get a prize? I don't know. But with that said, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.